Welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to talk about Tiny CLR and .NET Micro Framework. As you know, we have been using .NET Micro Framework on many of our products. It includes everything you would expect from a modern environment, uh, from threading to memory management, debugging over USB cable. It makes everything extremely convenient. However, there are many changes we would like to see done on .NET Micro Framework, and some of those changes are breaking changes. So we decided to fork .NET Micro Framework and start our own path, and we are calling the new operating system TinyCLR. TinyCLR is basically starting with .NET Micro Framework, Microsoft .NET Micro Framework 4.4, and then from there we have uh, decided to uh, to work on this on two sides. On the PC side, instead of having multiple installers, we shrunk it down to a simple about one megabyte extension that you just install on Visual Studio. And then this gives you a template to start the project and includes the, the, the debugging needed over USB or serial port. All libraries, everything is brought in through NuGet. So you have this one megabyte file, install it on Visual Studio, and that's all you need. From that point on, you can start adding any assemblies you need through, uh, through Nougat. The API that was used with .NET Micro Framework, it, that's changed in Windows 10 IoT extension, like on the Raspberry Pi, for example. The way a, uh, a GPIO is toggled is not similar to .NET Micro Framework, so that's also changed. On TinyCLR, it's similar API. We're trying to keep it as exactly the same if, if possible. So we're bringing it to be as, as close as possible. And then the way you blink an LED, for example, on a Raspberry Pi, the same way you would blink an LED on, on our products that, are, that support TinyCLR operating system. When, when there are new versions coming out of the DLLs or for a firmware, there is no SDK to install and download, and there are several steps. There are really no steps. You install that one extension, and that's it. We even changed the, the uh, USB device ID. So your PC, micro framework on your PC, does not even see the device once you update the firmware. What's the beauty of this is you can have micro framework and tiny CLR on your, C on your PC side by side. This is all exciting, but this is not all. On the firmware side, what we did was take the, the, uh, the giant build we have for .NET Micro Framework, and then for, on TinyCLR, we have broken this into two pieces. There's the core TinyCLR, and there is the whole layer that's separate. This library that we built, we can take that, that, that can be worked on by a separate team in the company, and that's what's happening now. And then we take that, and this can be included in a, a, uh, in a project. And it can be, for example, like a Keel project. So you have an IDE, you can add this library to uh, a giant library uh, to, to your project. And then you have the, uh, the hardware access layer, the whole layer. You have the GPIO, SPI, uh, USB, for example. All that being added on the IDE side, so it's easy for us to debug, deploy, step through code, and see what's happening as far as the hardware dependent layer, the hall. But then the core, which is completely independent, it's made completely to run on Cortex-M, it doesn't rely on anything for a specific uh, uh, brand or, or part number or flash size or whatnot. So all that is compiled separately. So we can continue developing on that one side and making it better and better without worrying about individual uh, pieces for individual uh, processors. And then that piece can, can be just brought in into uh, that's th this piece. It's, it's command line. It takes a long time to compile. It requires very specialized skill to work on that piece. But then for the drivers, the visual drivers, that can be easily ported by anyone who can have any slight experience with embedded systems. This allows us to greatly improve on the, the core system independently from the, uh, the specific processor. Stay tuned, you guys are intrigued when it comes to tiny CLR operating system. I hope you enjoyed this video and you're as excited as we are about the future of tiny CLR. Thank you very much and we'll see you next week.